So how do you run PHP code from a shared hosting plan? Now, I get a lot of arguments and I get a lot of pushback from people whenever I say that new coders should simply go with a shared hosting plan because people say that, no, it's better for new coders to create their own LAMP servers, their own WAMP servers, really understand the code from the ground up. The problem that I see is remember that it, administering a server is a real job unto itself. So if you're going to build a LAMP server, that's Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, that means you have to understand enough to be able to install Linux as an operating system. You have to be able to install Apache and configure it properly. You have to then install PHP and configure it properly. And then you have to install MySQL and configure it properly. And then you probably didn't realize that you should also install PHP MyAdmin to make administering your MySQL server a lot easier. And that's one of the problems that you run into to is you have these new coders who really want to learn PHP and then they decide to build their own LAMP server and then they're writing PHP code. The PHP code doesn't function properly and they think that they're doing something wrong with PHP when in reality they built their server poorly, right? Maybe the, the permissions aren't correct. Maybe they, they did something screwy with the configurations and so they sit there for a week thinking that they can't print hello world. Uh, they don't know how to write a single line of code when in in reality, they were able to write the code fine, but they messed something up when they were configuring the server, and that's causing them the, them the problems. So what I would argue is it's better to go with a shared hosting plan to begin with, to begin with, learn how to code PHP. Then once you know, once you feel comfortable running PHP scripts, and then build your own LAMP server and go from there because at that point you will know uh, your PHP scripts are supposed to work properly. You can run them off of the shared hosting plan and so if they run off the shared hosting plan but they don't run off your server then you know okay it's not my code I messed up building the shared server and then and then or I built I messed up building the server and so then you can go and you can learn how to build the server and then you can figure out what your problems are so that's one of the reasons why I would suggest you go with a shared uh, server or basically a, a hosted solution other than building one yourself because there is just so many issues that you can run into and especially if you're a new coder you don't want to have to be troubleshooting multiple systems while you're learning so another reason that I would argue that you should go with a shared hosting plan, a hosted plan, or a hosted solution, is that you will also find the weird problems in hosted solutions. Now realize that if you build your own LAMP server, you are entirely in charge of that environment. So you can change permissions, you can change the I, and I file willy-nilly, you can do all the configurations that you want. If you use a, a hosted solution, you will be limited to the configuration changes that you can do. This is important because many times new PHP coders, they will be coding for clients or the coding themselves, and the end result, the end product, will be going up on a shared hosting uh, solution. So if you are going to be putting your code up on a shared so hosting solution, it's good to know the quirks, it's good to know the problems that you'll run into uh, before you run into them. So these are some of the reasons, again, that I talk about that you should put your, your PHP code up on a shared hosting solution to begin with, um, instead of building your own LAMP server, because I think it's just at the end of the day, you can run into a lot of issues. So with that, let's go to the uh, to the control panel and I'll show you how to use a shared hosted solution in order to upload your PHP code. So this is my hosting account for a domain name called Silicon Dojo. So this was a uh, domain name that I was using for a while. I, I killed this particular project, but this hosting plan still exists. Now, one of the things when you go in for whatever your shared hosting plan is, do remember if you use a shared hosting plan, whether it's GoDaddy or HostGator or somebody else, this control panel is going to look different and from here you're going to be able to see some different information you're going to be able to see your domain name you're going to be able to see things like your IP address Installatron so Installatron does things such as it allows you to easily install WordPress or Drupal you're not going to worry about that PHP my admin this is this is a GUI interface for dealing with MySQL once you get to that point. But what we're going to be looking for today is we're going to be looking for the file manager. So the file management, and then what you're going to do is you're going to click the open. When you click the open, then nowadays uh, it depends on what file manager they're using. This uses cPanel, and this is what you're going to generally be looking at. So you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff here, logs, mail, application backups, SSL, a whole bunch of different things. What you are going to generally look for is you're going to look for the public HTML. So this is a problem that people run into, is what they do is they, they get to this, 
and they think this is the root directory for some reason. And so they upload their PHP code to this particular directory. But this directory here is not accessible to the outside world. This is this is the, the, the root directory of your account, but it's not the root for, for your website. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to double click and go into your your public HTML. This is what is accessible from the outside world. So when somebody goes to www.silicondojo.com, they get dumped into this directory. Now if we go and right now we go www.silicondojo.com, uh, what you'll notice is that nothing happens. Basically, I get a 403 error. And the reason is, is because obviously there is not, not nothing currently in that directory. So what we're going to do is we're going to upload a PHP file into this directory. All you have to do is you find the upload link. You can choose your file. So what we're going to do is we're going to des go to desktop. Uh, previously, I created a test uh, PHP file. Um, so that is there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click open. And that is now uploaded. So if we go here, we go to refresh, we go to public HTML, we will see that test.php is now there. The important thing to understand, though, is if we go back and we go to silicondojo.com and we refresh this, you will see that it is still forbidden. The reason is, is because since it's called test.php, we actually have to point to test.php. So test.php, now we get the hello world. This is the code that I wrote before. So the question then becomes, well, how do you automatically get to the code that you're writing? So I want to go to www.silicondojo.com and automatically see the PHP code that, that I created. So what you do there is, let's X that. All you do is you go here and you're going to rename this file. So the default where where all traffic is is directed by default is to the index file. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename this. So instead of being test.php, we're going to call it index.php. And then we're just simply going to rename the file. Now that it's been renamed as index.php, we can go to silicondojo.com and now we get the hello world. So the important thing to understand is that index.php is the default. So, so that is what you put into your root directory if you want people to automatically go to it. If you don't call the file index.php, you call it test.php or mail.php or whatever else, then you have to directly go to that URL versus just being able to go to www whatever your domain name is. And so this is the basic way that you can use shared hosting in order to host your PHP scripts. So that's the basic demonstration of using shared hosting in order to deploy your PHP script. Again, I think it's best for new coders to use shared hosting just so they don't run into the standard problems you run into with LAMP servers. You can run into a whole bunch of different problems, even things like your network card failing, right? Do you know how, do you feel comfortable troubleshooting a bad network card in a server that you build? If you don't, do you really want to start with building your own LAMP server from the get-go? I would recommend going with a shared hosting solution, getting used to writing your own code, uh, and then going from there. Additionally, as you'll see, but as you saw, by using the, the file manager, by using the GoDaddy interface, is the more comfortable you get with using these interfaces, the easier it will be when you go to deal with clients. So if your clients are using HostGator, if they're using GoDaddy, if they're using any of these other uh, hosted solutions, then if you're used to using the interfaces for hosted solutions, it will be easier for you to manage and maintain their overall website and web applications versus, if frankly, if you're used to using a LAMP server. If you're used to just being able to go in and change uh, configuration files willy-nilly, uh, going and using these GUI interfaces can actually be a little bit daunting. But that's all there is uh, to using a shared hosted environment in order to deploy your PHP script, uh, and that's why it matters.